It wasn't supposed to last this long. Two decades ago, the Boeing 777-300ER was just another step in the evolution of long-haul travel. A powerful twin-engine jet designed for a world that still believed bigger was better. A world dominated by giants like the 747 and the A380. But today, something remarkable is happening. Airlines that once rushed to modernize their fleets are now holding onto the triple 300 ER longer than anyone expected. Many are flying it harder, upgrading its cabins, and delaying its retirement. Even as newer, more fuel-efficient jets enter the market. It raises a simple but surprising question. Why are airlines still obsessed with a 20-year-old aircraft? And why are they choosing to extend the life of the 777-300ER instead of replacing it with the newer Airbus A330neo? To understand the answer, we have to go back. The early 2000s were a stormy era for global aviation. Oil prices whiplashed from one extreme to another. Passenger demand was shifting unpredictably. And the giants of the sky, the 747s, the A340s, the icons of the long-haul age, were suddenly becoming liabilities. For engines no longer meant prestige. For engines meant cost. Airlines around the world were facing a new reality. They didn't need bigger aircraft. They needed smarter ones. Boeing sensed the change coming long before most. And while Airbus doubled down on its super jumbo gamble with the A380, Boeing quietly began sketching something different. A jet designed not for headlines, but for absolute dominance. The result was a machine that would redefine long-haul aviation for an entire generation, the Boeing 777-300ER. From the moment the aircraft was conceived, it was clear Boeing wasn't just trying to build a replacement for the aging 747-400 or the thirsty A340. They were building a weapon, a long-range twin-engine aircraft with the soul of a cargo hauler and the economics of a narrow body. A jet that could fly farther than the A340-600 move more belly cargo than any other twin ever built, and burn dramatically less fuel doing it. But the true heart of the 777-300ER was its engines, the legendary G9115B, the largest, most powerful commercial engines ever put on a passenger plane. Their diameter was wider than the fuselage of a Boeing 737. Their roar became instantly recognizable at airports across the world. And their reliability was so extraordinary that airlines sometimes joked, you don't operate the 777, it operates itself. When the first 777-300ER rolled off the line, airlines took notice. And then they fell in love. Emirates ordered dozens and built an entire business model around it. Cathay Pacific used it to dominate Asia's long-haul market. Qatar Airways, Air France, Japan Airlines, KLM, a and each one adopted it as the backbone of their global fleets. The aircraft could do everything. Ultra-long-haul missions? Easy. High-density regional routes? Perfect. Night-heavy cargo markets? It excelled even more. To passengers, it was quiet, comfortable, and modern. To pilots, it was a powerhouse. Agile, responsive, and reliable to the point of superstition. But to airlines, it was something far more valuable. It was a profit machine. A jet that maximized revenue, minimized maintenance, and rarely, if ever, let them down. The 777-300 didn't just join the market. It conquered it. And in the years ahead, it would become something even more surprising. A plane so successful that airlines can't seem to let go, even when newer models promise better efficiency on paper. The legend of the 777-300ER was just beginning. By the late 2000s, aviation was entering a new era. Fuel prices were rising. Environmental pressure was increasing. Airlines wanted aircraft that could fly farther, burn less fuel, and carry just the right number of passengers for emerging long, thin routes. Manufacturers responded fast. Airbus stepped forward with an entirely new wide body, the A350, a carbon fiber, next-generation long-haul jet that promised efficiency the world had never seen. Boeing countered with its own revolution. The 787 Dreamliner, a lightweight composite twin-engine aircraft designed for point-to-point -point travel and unmatched fuel savings. And for airlines that didn't need such cutting-edge technology but still wanted modern efficiency, Airbus introduced the A330neo, a refreshed and improved successor to the hugely successful A330 family. Everything pointed in one direction, move on. Retire the old. Replace the classics. That was the message. 
But airlines didn't listen. Because something unusual happened, something nobody at Airbus, Boeing, or even within the airlines themselves fully expected. Even as the skies began filling with carbon fiber fuselages and ultra-efficient engines, the Boeing 777-300ER refused to fade away. Instead, it did the opposite. It kept beating expectations, year after year. Airlines realized the 777-300ER had a combination that none of the new jets could replicate at the time. The right number of seats, big enough for major hubs, but not a capacity monster like the A380. Excellent range, able to cross oceans comfortably without sacrificing payload. A level of reliability that crews trusted without hesitation. It wasn't the newest, it wasn't the lightest, but it was the most dependable money-making machine airlines had ever seen. Meanwhile, the new generation wasn't perfect. The A330neo, although efficient and modernized, simply couldn't compete with the 777-300ER's raw performance. Not in payload, not in range flexibility, and especially not in revenue per flight, where the 777-300ER continued to dominate long-haul markets. The 787 was revolutionary but came with early teething problems, battery issues, production delays, and operational limitations that made some airlines cautious. The A350 was brilliant, but it served a different mission profile and required a level of upfront investment not every airline was ready for. And so, in an era that celebrated the future, airlines quietly kept choosing the past. Because the Boeing 777-300ER wasn't old. It was proven. It was profitable. And it was built for the kind of workhorse reliability that airlines could rely on even when the market changed overnight. The world evolved. The industry modernized. But the 777-300ER? It simply kept doing what it always did best, making money, flight after flight, without ever slowing down. There is a part of the Boeing 777-300ER that passengers almost never think about, yet airlines obsess over it. Not the engines, not the wings, not even the passenger cabin. It's the belly, the massive cargo hold beneath your feet. Inside that space lies the aircraft's greatest advantage. Because the 777-300ER isn't just a long-haul passenger jet, it's one of the most capable cargo-hauling machines ever built. On a typical intercontinental flight, it can carry 20 to 25 tons of freight while still being full of passengers. That is more than almost any other passenger aircraft in the world. But this hidden superpower became truly visible during one of aviation's darkest moments. When the pandemic hit, passenger demand evaporated overnight. Aircraft that once crossed oceans daily were suddenly parked in long, silent lines on unused runways. The industry froze, except for one jet. The Boeing 777-300ER kept flying, not because people were traveling, but because cargo needed to move. E-commerce surged. Vaccines had to be transported. Food, electronics, medical supplies, everything the global economy depends on, all needed to reach the other side of the world. And the 777-300ER became the hero of that moment. Airlines operated it as a makeshift freighter, sometimes even loading cargo into the cabin itself. Flight after flight, when almost every other aircraft type was grounded, the 777-300ER continued generating revenue, quietly, reliably, and more profitably than anyone expected. Meanwhile, the A330neo, designed for efficiency and thinner markets, simply couldn't match this advantage. It carried fewer passengers, far less cargo, and produced lower overall yield. No matter how efficient it was, it lacked the physical capacity that airlines depended on during the crisis. Because in aviation, one truth has never changed. Capacity is power. Payload is profit. And when it comes to the perfect blend of both, the Boeing 777-300ER still stands at the top, a passenger jet built like a freighter, earning money in places where others simply can't compete. Long-haul flying is not gentle. It pushes every part of an aircraft to its limits. Hours spent slicing through jet streams. Icy temperatures at 40,000 feet. Takeoffs at maximum weight. Landings on remote runways thousands of miles from home. Fuel loads heavy enough to bend metal. Cycles that never stop. In this world, only the toughest machines survive. And only the most reliable ones thrive. The Boeing 777-300ER didn't just survive it, it mastered it. Its dispatch reliability climbed beyond 99%. 
a number that defines elite engineering. Its GE90 engines achieved a level of consistent, fault-free performance that almost rewrote the rulebook. Its maintenance cycles allowed airlines to keep it in the air longer, earning more revenue hour after hour, day after day. Pilots described the 777 as steady, predictable, unshakable, a giant that behaves like a surgeon's tool. Engineers talk about its structural strength, its redundancy, its overbuilt systems designed in an era when margins weren't just enough, they were more than enough. And airlines? They praise one thing above all, dependability. Because in aviation, reliability becomes memory, memory becomes trust, and trust becomes loyalty so deep, it shapes entire fleets. This is the power of the 777-300ER, a jet with nearly two decades of proof behind every flight hour. The A330neo may be newer, cleaner, more efficient on paper, but the 777-300ER has something no engineering update can replace. Time-tested credibility. And in the high-stakes world of global aviation, where mistakes cost millions and trust takes decades to earn, that credibility is priceless. This isn't to say the A330neo is a bad airplane. In fact, it's exceptional at what it was designed to do. Low operating costs, modern engines, excellent efficiency, perfect for medium-demand long-haul routes. But that's the issue. The market shifted toward high-capacity, high-cargo, long-range routes the exact routes the 777-300ER was built for. Airlines want jets that can generate premium revenue, carry heavy payloads, and maximize every square meter of space. The A330neo is efficient. The 777-300ER is profitable, and airlines always choose profit. Here's the irony. The true successor to the 777-300ER isn't the A330neo at all. It's the 777X. Boeing's ultra-modern upgrade to the original. But delays, certification issues, and engine problems have pushed the 777X far into the future. So airlines are stuck with two options. Keep the 777-300ER, or buy something smaller. And most airlines prefer to keep the giant they already know. Because the 777-300ER still fills seats, still hauls cargo, still generates profit, and still delivers reliability that the newer A330neo can't match on big global routes. It's not nostalgia, it's strategy. The story of the 777-300ER is not about the past, it's about endurance. It wasn't supposed to remain the king of long-haul aviation. It wasn't supposed to outlast the A330. It wasn't supposed to survive the rise of the A350. It wasn't supposed to stay relevant after the 787. And yet, here it is, still flying, still earning, still dominating. A jet built for another era that somehow became perfect for this one. And that's why airlines love it. That's why they extend it. That's why they refuse to let it retire. The Boeing 777-300ER didn't just succeed. It transcended every expectation. And in a world obsessed with what's new, it proved something surprising. Sometimes the future belongs to the aircraft that were built to last.